Good morning friends. Welcome to Pannika Tutorials YouTube channel. In this video, I want to discuss about code optimization. The code optimization is broadly classified into mission independent code optimization and mission dependent code optimization. First, let me discuss about mission independent code optimization. Then I will discuss about the mission dependent code optimization. In mission independent code optimization, we have a technique called folding or constant propagation and then we have the redundancy elimination, strength reduction and loop optimization. In loop optimization again we have subclasses such as code motion, loop unrolling and loop jump. First let me discuss about the folding or constant propagation. Suppose let's take that you have an expression called some c is equal to 1 plus 4 plus b is there. This is your expression you have written. Instead of writing 1 plus 4 plus b, directly you would have written c is equal to 5 plus b. Am I right or wrong? So this kind of code reduction we will call it as a folding or constant propagation. Is it clear? I hope you have understood. Instead of writing 1 plus 4, you can directly write it as 5 because you know that 1 plus 4 is 5 but you don't know the b value so that way you are not writing the c value. Is it clear? Are you able to understand instead of writing c is equal to 1 plus 4 plus b, you can directly write as c is equal to 5 plus b. Okay. Now coming to the redundancy elimination. Let me discuss about the redundancy elimination with a simple example. Let's take that you have written a is equal to b into c. Okay. Then here you are again let's take the d is equal to b into c is there plus some e is there. This is your expression. Are you able to understand a is equal to b into c, d is equal to b into c plus e. Let's take that b values are some values. Okay. okay. Are you able to understand? Now here what you are doing a is equal to b into c. What are the values of b and c? You will multiply and the result will be stored in the a. Now again d is equal to b into c. You no need to compute again. Because after this instruction and this instruction, the B and C values are not updated. If they are not updated, again why should I compute B into C? Already the B into C value is there in the A. We can use it. Are you able to understand? This can be done with the help of the DAG which is a directed acyclic graph. Are you able to understand? So, this is what we will call it as redundancy elimination. If you are performing the B into C, and use that value here instead of again computing the b into c. So this is what we are calling it as a redundance. We will have to eliminate that one. And now let me discuss about the strength reduction. Strength reduction means suppose if you have a, a is equal to some b into 2 is there. Okay. Meaning is that b value you have to multiply with 2 and the result you need to store it in the a. Now instead of writing like that, you can write it as a is equal to b plus b. Is there any difference whether 2 into b or b plus b is same or different? Is it same? Then what is the thing we are doing? As the multiplication is costly operation as compared to the addition. What is meant by costly operation? The number of clock cycles the multiplication usually takes more as compared to the number of clock cycles required for addition. Is it clear? So, instead of performing multiplication, if it is possible, the same operation I can perform using addition, then I will do the strength reduction. So, I hope you have understood what is folding, what is strength reduction and what is redundancy elimination. Let me discuss about the next one which is a loop optimization. Okay. Now for the loop optimization, what is meant by loop operation? In high level language, we have a for loop, we have a while loop, we have a do while loops. Is it clear? Can we optimize them? If we can optimize one instruction in a loop, suppose your loop is running from for i is equal to 0 to i less than n, i plus plus. So your loop is running for n times. If you are reducing one of the instruction in the for loop, let's take that 10 instructions are there in the for loop. If you reduce one of the instruction which is not required, 
then what you can do you can reduce 10 instructions indirectly because, because this loop is running for n times so you are reducing this instruction for n number of times are you able to understand it or not if the loop is running for 10 times you can reduce 10 instructions because in a loop if you are reducing one instruction indirectly you are reducing n number of instructions where n is the number of times this loop is running now one important challenge here is that when we look at the high level long ways we even easily we can distinguish whether it is a loop or not because we have a keywords for do while while loop is there so easily we can distinguish whether it is a loop or not but when we convert the high level long ways to the intermediate code because code optimization will be done after what after the intermediate code when we pass the high level long ways to the lexical analysis syntax analysis semantic analysis intermediate code intermediate code will generate the intermediate code means intermediate code generation phase will generate the intermediate code now the intermediate code usually represents in the three address code already i have discussed how to represent the three address code what is a quadruple what is a triple all these things i have discussed in my earlier videos i hope you have watched them if you did not watch them or if you does not know what is a three address code i request you to go back and watch those videos and come back to this video for better understanding whenever we represent a, a loop in the three address code usually we will have go to statements like that but not all the go to statements will create the loop that point you should remember so first thing is that if you want to perform the loop optimization you should know how to identify the loop once you identify there is a loop in the three address code then we will discuss about the how to perform the code motion or loop unrolling and loop jamming in the next video i will discuss about how to identify the loop from the three address code so let me discuss about the machine dependent code optimization we have a register allocation is it clear use of addressing mode when i was discussing about the computer organization i have discussed about 10 types of addressing modes like we have a direct addressing mode indirect addressing mode register direct addressing mode register indirect address mode like that i have discussed about 10 addressing mode if it is a mission dependent you can use this addressing modes and this code optimization will be vary from mission to mission that's why it is called as mission dependent addressing mode because some mission will have some five or six addressing mode or some may have 10 addressing mode some mission will have some limited number of registers someone may have the high number of bits of register so it will depend on the missions and another one is peep hole optimization this is very important we have the redundant load or store operations can we reduce the number of load or store operations all these things with the examples i will discuss and strength reduction is it clear and use of mission items in if i want to write increment i instead of writing it as a move load add all these things with the help of the items like inci I can perform the increment am I right or wrong and then we have the flow control optimization like avoid the unnecessary jumps is it clear or avoid the dead code is it clear all these things I will discuss when I am discussing about the mission dependent each one I will discuss in detail so I hope you have understood what is mission independent code optimization mission dependent code optimization what is folding what is redundancy elimination strength reduction and then in the next video i will discuss about how to identify a loop from the three address code so i hope you have understood what are the concepts i have discussed in this video if you still have any doubts related to the concepts which are discussed in this video feel free to ask me in the comment section i will try to clear your doubts as early as possible thank you for watching my video have a nice day